Hey guys, so I've decided to do these mini videos in between episodes called Whacklash, where I break down a controversial lyric that people are talking about and see if I can't add some context to flesh out what's happening. Okay, so lately a song by Eminem leaked called Things Get Worse, which, as many headlines say, talks about Eminem siding with Chris Brown and his feud with Rihanna. My issue with a lot of these articles is that they don't give full context to the quote, which, while not completely vindicating him from blame, at least puts in perspective what he said in the song. Now, just to preface, of course I'm not saying you can't criticize art, but at the same time, art needs context. Uh, for instance, if you came out of a horror movie and noticed that the killer killed a specific type of person, you might think, hey, why did it seem like the killer focused on women or children or teenagers as their target? What was the narrative significance behind it in terms of what the film is trying to say? But if someone came out of a horror movie saying, whoa, why did they have so many people being brutally murdered in that movie? Uh, don't they know that looks horrifying? Uh, why would a director want to show so much explicit blood and gore? You'd think, hey, do you know what a horror movie is? Because there are just certain conventions that the genre uses. And that's not to excuse the work of art if the murders are, say, specifically related to a certain minority. You could ask, hey, why is it that only brown people are dying in this movie? And that could lead you to find either a deeper commentary about society within the film, or you could find out that the director is a xenophobic jackass. The point is, you should engage in what the context of the specific situation of what the piece of art is doing, with the understanding that there are certain conventions it's adhering to. Now, with Eminem, I'm not saying his music is unable to be critiqued as well. There have been plenty of times where I've been uncomfortable with the context of certain songs. However, there is still context to be considered before looking at individual lyrics. For instance, we know that one of Eminem's gimmicks is ripping on celebrities, where he makes fun of the status of famous people and has a laugh at their goofs and shortcomings. We also know, though, that he's made lots of songs specifically dissing women and their sexual proclivities and what have you. The problem with this Chris Brown Rihanna lyric, though, is that it cuts right in the middle. Now, no doubt, there's definitely different context for who he's talking about. For example, I personally don't find the stuff he'd say about female celebrities like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera that enjoyable, because usually the jokes are about who they're having sex with and things that unnecessarily insult them on that type of personal level. But whenever he made a song about, like, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, you could always tell that was him being a troll whose lyrics are about ripping into a substandard yet superstar status music scene for the amusement of the average listener. The issue for a lot of these insults comes in when it relates to something that's real. Now, as someone who's a fan, I'm one of those people who can listen to Eminem and enjoy the intentionally offensive content while understanding that offending you is in and of itself the point, while at the same time understanding that sometimes things can go too far. So with that in mind, let's look at the Rihanna lyric. He says, let me add my two cents. Of course I'd side with Chris Brown. I'd beat a bitch down too if she gave my dick an itch now. Now, if the message of this particular song was in general about how evil women are and that they just deserve to die or something like that, I'd say, yeah, the context for this would be pretty damn harrowing. However, let's look at another lyric from this exact same song. Kick down Dakota Fanning's front door while the whore is tanning. He can't say whore? Of course he can, man. He just saw her fanny, then murdered her while he danced around the room and wore her panties. Now, these lyrics are obviously different thematically, uh, by which I mean, in the Rihanna lyric, Eminem's talking about something real and traumatic that she went through, and in this lyric, as far as I know, Dakota Fanning hasn't been murdered on a tanning bed. But in the context of the song as a whole, the ridiculous scenarios about celebrities are supposed to be about ridiculing him. He's not necessarily saying things he believes you should really do. What I'm saying is, if the overall context of the song was about how women are evil liars who just want to give you STDs and take your money, yeah, I definitely understand the outrage. However, seeing that the overall vibe of the song is yet another troll record with over-the-top lyrics about celebrities, I'd just ask that you take the lyric about Rihanna about as seriously as the one about killing Dakota Fanning and wearing her underwear. However, the difference is, like I said, the Rihanna situation is real, whereas the Dakota Fanning one is imagined. And even so, let's take a look at one of the lyrics I didn't see people bring up as much. He says, I'd beat a bitch down too if she gave my dick an itch now. So from this lyric, what he's joking about is the idea that someone would indeed be angry if you gave them an STD. And so to play the troll asshole here, the justification is supposed to be Eminem pointing out the folly of a possible real life situation and reacting with over the top lyrics. It's the same thing when he raps about Trump. He's not actually going to spill an awfully hot coffee pot on him, but it's the fact that you know the person they're making fun of did something shitty, so here comes the anti-hero Slim Shady to rip on him for it. Problem is, there's absolutely no evidence Rihanna ever gave Chris Brown an STD. It's literally something that didn't happen and that he's therefore fabricating. See, this is my issue. His transgressive justification for dissing her in this instance is based on something that's just not true, and was probably based on gossip going around the rumor mill at the time to explain why indeed Chris Brown would do something as monstrous as he did. So the troll character taking revenge on a shitty person shtick, it doesn't work here, because the foundational basis upon which the insult was made is about targeting a person who, from all possible angles, is the victim of the situation. So, to end it, if you want to look at the blatant falsehood he tells here and call it out for being part of the pattern of women having to deal with being accused of things they didn't do, yeah, I can see that. However, since the song was leaked, which means this is an unreleased recording he shelved like 10 years ago, I'm guessing he probably wasn't too proud of the song in general. Plus, Rihanna's friends with him and doesn't seem to give too much of a shit, so, yeah, I personally wouldn't put too much stake in it. 
Well, hey, guys, that's the Backlash episode. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you want to carry on other music discussions with me, join my Patreon Discord, where the community and I talk about music and movies and all types of pop culture stuff. So leave a like if you liked, because it helps. Comment if you have something to say, because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe button and the bell, because it helps the most. And if you want to hear some of the music I'm currently into, check out my radio show on Station Head, where we play all the dope hip-hop mainstream radio won't from any time period and any time zone, with new hip-hop Thursdays every week around 7.30. I'll leave all the links in the description, so check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.